Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to tell you all the great and wonderful things that are happening in the city of Missoula for your last best morning show. Let's kick things off with a little bit of weather. Currently, it is 9 degrees outside. Um, your high is going to be 25. Your low is going to be 17. Uh, by Saturday, your high is going to get a little bit warmer. Uh, of course, I did tease this a little bit earlier this week when we had those bitter cold temperatures. Uh, but things are definitely warming up, and things are going to start to snow. It did snow a little bit today from what I noticed uh, when I was getting coffee. Um, but of course, you're pretty much your highs are going to be in the 30s and your lows are going to be in the 20s. So you can expect your winter weather to just warm up just a little bit. And then hopefully it'll just keep up warming up 10 degrees more every week until spring begins. So we're going to expect a fairly uh, cold to moderately cold March. So um, if you're interested in learning about that, you can go to nationalweatherservice.gov. Um, if you want to know more about your snowfall, and if you guys are going up to the slopes this weekend, you can go to onthesnow.com. I took a nice little screenshot of a nice little representation from this website, and it tells you exactly where to go. Um, Whitefish Mountain Ski Resort had no inches of fresh new powder in the last 24 hours, but that's sure to change in the last tw in the next 24 hours. Uh, there's a very uh, similar theme with pretty much all these other areas around here. You got black Blacktail Mountain Ski Area, Snowball didn't have any fresh powder, um, Big Sky Resort didn't have any fresh new snow. So the only place that I see that has fresh new snow in the last 24 hours is Lost Trail. Maverick Mountain had an inch in the last 24 hours. So there's not much going on there in terms of snow, but be aware that it is uh, slated to snow this weekend. So you might be able to see some good snow um, coverage happening later this week. Um, in local news, the overall head count of enrollment at the University of Mo uh, Montana for spring semester is down 5.4% when compared to the spring semester of last year. According to a news release for the campus, the total spring headcount is 10,987 students, which is 628 fewer students than a year ago. Uh, in recent presentation to the campus, Seth Bodner, President Seth Bodner, said he's laying out a four-year plan with enrollment targets. Um, the news released for the UM did not include those targets, and UM did not provide them to the Missoulian by press time. And uh, according to the Missoulian, overall students uh, tuition um, enrollment has dropped 25 percent since 2010 according to UM a bright spot on the enrollment picture is that the graduate student um, posted a 4.5 percent increase in headcount enrollment for spring semester which compared to, to a year ago and it's additional of 100 students in the graduate program um, in other news happening here in Missoula um, a Big Sky High School student has obtained a temporary order of protection barring another student from coming to school after that student allegedly told the classroom last week he was going to shoot up the school. Uh, the administration said the student was a low risk at first, but with the recent tagging of the school uh, that threatened the student body, the, student decided, the uh, school decided to not take any chances and barred them from Big Sky. The tagging and threatening words, according to MCPS, are not related to one another. In state news, um, Quarantine bison from Yellowstone National Park have illegally released for the second time in weeks, increasing the likelihood they'll be killed. According to an article I found on the Billions Gazette, the latest release of 73 bison happened sometime between Wednesday night and Thursday morning after someone com compromised the fence at um, Stevens Creek Quarantine Facility near Gardner. There were 96 animals at the facility. Not all animals were wandered off. Park officials have been tight-lipped about the damage and the conditions of Stephen Creek, and that would allow the facility to be broken into twice. They haven't identified a subject thus far. American Indian tribes were, were to receive 20 yearling bison females, 40 to 70 males, as breeding stock for the establishing genetically pure herds of bison. Preparing the animal for transfer is a two-year process, during which the quarantined bison are determined not to carry uh, uh, brachylosis, sorry, um, a disease that could cause livestock to miscarry. Um, of course, there is no 10-second rule for the program bison that hit non-quarantine ground. Any recovered animal would have to restart their two-year quarantine process, and that's a big deal. Um, as a result of gun violence and Florida's House ignoring the people's voice to open up a debate, many people across the nation are uh, staging walkouts in schools. Um, or out of schools. So from this is from usnews.com reports, a wave of demonstration reaching from Arizona to Maine. Uh, students 
at dozens of U.S. high schools walked out of class Wednesday to protest gun violence and honor victims of last week's deadly shooting in Florida. The protest spread from school to school as students shared plans for the demonstration over social media. Many lasted 17 minutes to honor the, each of the 17 kids and people killed at the majority Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland. Um, at the protest in Washington, students held a, a mo moment of silence in memory of those killed in the Parkland and, li um, and listened to as the names of the dead were recited. Many of the protests were accompanied by a chance of Never Again, which has been rallying cries since Florida shooting. Principals at some uh, schools allowed the protest and promised not to punish students for leaving uh, class while superintendents, uh, while superintendent in West Virginia town vowed to spend any students who participate in this. While some students said that their opinions have been belittled because they're still teenagers, uh, they countered that they'll soon be voters and shouldn't be taken lightly. Some of the some said that they'll be taking a stand because lawmakers haven't. So um, and that concludes what's happening in the news. Um, I got some new programs it's gonna be airing on MCAT. So without further ado, here are some of the new programs. Uh, we got a couple MCPS concerts that we filmed over the winter break. And we also got a, a couple nice lectures. And um, we got part two of Art and Diplomacy. <laughs> were stolen off of public land and milled um, and sold to the railroad. I mean, it's a, it's a very interesting story about the sort of beginnings of capitalism in, in western Montana and the development of towns all along the rail lines, which the Missoula Mercantile and its investors actually facilitated. They had enough money that they could borrow money to build a railroad. So they built the Bitterroot branch of the railroad all the way up to Connor and sold it to the Northern Pacific. That's how much money that was, was sort of churned at this intersection of Higgins and Front. They controlled real estate, they controlled mining interests, they controlled lumber interests, they built the Bonner Mill, which was the most advanced uh, lumber mill in the Pacific Northwest when it was completed and also the first mill powered by hydropower. They actually had a small generator that ran the electric motors at the mill by damming the, by damming the Blackfoot River um, and generating electricity there. That mill was then flooded out when William Clark built the Milltown Dam and the bigger Bonner uh, effort that flooded both the Clark Fork River and the Blackfoot River up past the mill. Kids, how many dancers did you see? And everybody agreed that they saw three. And the mom and the aunt said, well, there were just two of us. <laughs> and as they thought about it, they thought about that third figure that was just a little bit grayer and a little bit different than the other two and how it fairly floated over the meadow. And even to this day when Cheryl thinks about that, she gets chills along her spine. So how are we doing? Want to hear some more? And after that, 
underneath my, my suit, I was wearing a Zulu, a, a Zulu outfit. And I took that off and threw it all over the ground. And I said, this is me. Don't think this is me. This is not me. So don't perceive me like that. Just remember that I also do have a culture. I come from somewhere. So now I'm teaching you how all of us can, um, can uh, be together in this culture. And also you teach me yours. And I've been going around the world, really, literally, going to people and saying, what's your culture? What's your culture? What's your culture? Show me something. Show me something. Show me authentic Japanese. Uh, uh, dancing or tr tribal dancing or cultural dancing, I go to each and every country to see those things. And that has opened my mind as well. So, so diplomacy really helps culturally because then you get to understand the next person. Because if we don't understand that, how are we, gonna, how are we in Africa going to go back and teach that and change minds? But that's why it's also important to do it in South Africa. And in September last year, I hosted an international ballet gala with stars from around the world, but also brought Andile back. And we were mixing classical ballet with another uh, truly South African dance called Pansula. And it really started bringing white South Africans to understand more the Pansula dance and black South Africans to understand the ballet. And it's that internal diplomacy that for me is so important because that's where we have to start starting now it's time for a little pre-critic if you guys like movies um, you're gonna know exactly that this segment is all about why bother because uh, most movies are all pretty much the same starting with what starts as a couple's game night turns into a trip to the movies about a couple's game night gone wrong. Um, this movie is about Jason Bateman, kind of movie deal, where he's kind of not on board with this whole thing and sarcastically agrees to solve a murder mystery or be in this movie in the first place. Uh, Rachel McAdams is here to bring her acting to the table, and you can sure bet this movie will not surpass Black Panther. But what everyone just does not go, uh, go, but of course, you know, just don't even go to Black Panther. You probably already saw it last week, so um, yeah. So, unless, you know, you, you're against the Black Panther movie for some reason, and you're saying, I'm going to go to any movie but Black Panther, then maybe go see Game Night. This next movie gets a little bit weird, because it's a sci-fi movie about physics and things. Anyways, poor Mania is back in this women-only adventure to an unknown forest where physics go out of the window. Out the window, sorry. Watch this movie about people in a sci-fi situation where people have to die and only one survivor will come out because it's a, you know, because it's a sci-fi horror kind of movie. The whole idea of this movie is about understanding human evolution and life in general while at the same time kind of just doing what sci-fi movies do kill all the humans or fight in the stars. Of course, usually, let me tell you about sci-fi. It's either too big or really claustrophobic. Um, so you, and of course, you get too much background on, on a character you only see in the background for five seconds on their Wikipedia page. Up next, we got this movie is a fantasy romance, so you know that it's going to be interesting, about a girl who meets a boy, and then the next day meets a different boy with the same personality. If you liked Fallen with Denzel Washington, but feel like it didn't have enough romance, well, buckle down your possessed bodies where love is never physical but spiritual. Can this girl to learn to fall in love with the same person in a different body each day or the casting director run out of actors? Uh, find out when you don't even think about the movie every day, which may or may not be coming to theaters near you. You can save yourself a ticket. Um, and that concludes Pre-Critic. Um, up next, we got a brand new art clip. I swear, it's brand new. And it's from, let me just double check. It is from the Zach Mini Show Silent Auction Live Show. So here is some of the art from the Zootown Arts Community Center. And when I come back, I'll talk about everything you need to know, what's happening with the city of Missoula, taking down about 88 trees near the Van Buren um, Interstate Change.
So recently, um, Orange Street uh, built that roundabout to uh, access Interstate 90, and people at Van Buren Street were just like, yes, let's do it. And now we're going to talk about City Council, and that is the topic of City Council for today during the Committee of the Whole Meeting. The Van Buren Street Interchain Project from the Montana Department of Transportation Project will replace the 1966 vintage interchange with a new double roundabout system. So basically, uh, with a dedicated bicycle pedestrian path to relieve traffic congestion and increase safety, the project includes sound wall installation to diminish highway noise to the adjacent neighborhood up the Rattlesnake um, and um, Van Buren Rattlesnake Drive. Yeah, uh, the project includes a sound wall installation um, most of which, uh, so of course, a number of trees and shrubs will be removed, most of which are in poor condition and are non-native species. Replacement trees and shrubs will, be com will comply with the uh, city's landscape design standards. Basically, um, what they do uh, on Expressway Boulevard interchange and also Orange Street as well. Here's Donnie from MDT shows us an aerial view of Van Buren Street. The roundabouts, there will be one here and one here and for anybody familiar that drives you know and takes this off ramp a lot and trying to take a left turn here I think you'll you know you guys can realize the the, the big safety benefits and traffic benefits of having a roundabout here and, and all the modeling we, that MDT did showed that it was the the best scenario even better than a signalized intersection um, all right so that was Donnie and uh, the next quote I got is from Courtney uh, Sprunger. She's a big sky public relations. She talks about the removal of the 80 trees and 88 um, bushes in the area. We're going to start by um, landscaping, essentially. And obviously one of the first things that happens, which is understandably um, hard, is that we do have to take out some trees to do that. So to be totally open and upfront, we are going to have to remove 85 trees to start in 88 shrubs. That said, um, the Missoula City Forester was kind enough to partner and collaborate with us and really identify and look at those trees. And we were actually able to figure out that the large majority of those trees were non-native or they were non-viable. Um, they weren't necessarily the best fit for one re reason or another, or they weren't likely to last over the long term. All right. So. Um the landscaping design is that going to be planting uh, many more native um, plants and trees in the area as a result after the fact. Uh, of course, uh, back in the 60s, uh, here's a nice little history note. Um, the university, along with the citizens of Missoula, planted trees in the university district and surrounding areas to uh, w with uh, just a bunch of trees. The whole idea was like, let's just plant some trees, let's be green, Missoula. And most of these trees had a lifespan of 40 years, which, you know, at, the, at this point, um, that's basically 20 years ago of when they were supposed to die or dying. And so many of the uh, trees that are in a lot of these areas are on the verge of death and they also have their own um, natural problems as well so in a lot of ways this is a way to kill two birds with one stone w while also planting new trees uh, Brian Van Lossberg uh, basically wants a visual representation based on what will happen with the county courthouse removal like as an example the county courthouse's removal of the trees because um, that was uh, very sudden uh, to a lot of people removing a lot of those old trees at the courthouse and he wants to see more of what uh, a rendering of what this would look like. Having, you know, some visuals even up on uh, the fence or online or somewhere of here's what this is going to look like ultimately would have really helped um, bridge the gap between, oh, my God, all the trees came down and, you know, what's going what's gonna to be there. So yeah. um, I'm just repeating myself, but pictures are really valuable. Okay. Michelle. All right. So, um the next thing I got here is from a quote from um, back to Courtney Sprunger. Says that their group will be doing um, um, leading uh, this. They'll be doing a lot of um, public outreach and uh, leading up to this project. And this is the information. Um, we're going to go out with a month-long effort to let people know. And I understand there are going to be people that still maybe are not in agreement and don't understand. But we will work really hard to let people know ahead of time. And. Some of the ways that we're going to do that, we're obviously out speaking with a lot of the community influencers and leaders this week. Um, Katie and I, who's here, are doing that one-on-one -on -one and, and trying to answer their questions and see if there's anything further we can do to equip and inform. 
And then next week we'll actually start with a pretty organized effort. So we all have staff that will be out canvassing in the Rattlesnake area, kind of close to that project, the people who would be most likely to see it first. Um, we will work on putting out a press release, and then we will actually be doing a fairly aggressive social media campaign. So you may have seen the video that we developed to try to help share the story and help people understand why this is happening. And All right. So speaking of video that they want to share, here is that video that they want to share to let you guys know about the Van Buren Street Project. Well, this interchange was built in 1966. So Missoula has changed a lot in the last 50 years and transportation system is not working as it was designed originally. The amount of traffic has increased tremendously. Now at this intersection, we have people that are racing to get to the intersection to make a left-hand turn. We're back in traffic onto the interstate. We're increasing commute times and generally just not functioning as well as what we'd like to see. By adding in roundabouts to this interchange, we should reduce the severity of crashes. That's one of the biggest impacts it's gonna have. Um, it's also going to allow for safer crossings for pedestrians. It should reduce delay times for people in their commutes. A big part of Montana Department of Transportation mission is to provide a safe and efficient transportation system for the public. To create a safer intersection, MDT will have to remove 21 desirable trees from the interchange. The good news is that we're going to be planting 53 new trees, ponderosa pines and burr oaks in this area, and preserve 165 of the existing trees and shrubs. The Montana Department of Transportation hopes to start the tree and shrub removal in late March. It should take a couple weeks and the main project construction will begin in mid-April. MDT understands that it's hard to lose these desirable trees, but in the end, we're gonna end up with a safer interchange, better landscape, a greater number of more desirable trees than what we currently have. The Montana Department of Transportation would like to thank you for your time and patience while we work to deliver a safe interchange here at Van Buren Street. All right, so that was that video. Uh, I have one last quote from this meeting, and it talks about um, what the, uh, what uh, what Brian von Lusberg praises about this project. Being an improvement over what's there currently, and I really appreciate the comments about you know what, what's there today kind of represents the landscaping thinking of 50 years ago, and um, so here we are today, and we've you know I think this this body has passed um, a, uh, you know, a, guide, a design guideline manual about what we'd like to see in these areas and it's driven by what really are community values around use of nat native vegetation, reducing maintenance and irrigation needs uh, and such. So uh, to the extent that we can convey that vision here and what people will see, the, you know, the better. All right, so that was Brian von Lossberg. And just a little side note that uh, Missoula, uh, back to its native roots, was more of a valley, and the fact that we uh, there are more trees now uh, because of humans than there ever was in nature. So moving on, let's talk about some um, things that are happening in public safety and health. Uh, the, the health board recently approved a change of Missoula's city, county, air rules regarding wildfire smoke episodes. They need to revise the language uh, that came through conversation with the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency who expressed concern that the existing wording was too vague and appears to uh, waive all air pollution control measures during a smoke episode. Here is Sarah Cofield from Missoula City County Health Department to talk about that. So we have this rule 4.112 that says when it's a wildfire causing the smoke, we don't need to call those alerts and warnings and tell people to stop using your wood stoves because that would make us look kind of silly and wouldn't actually help fix the air at all. Uh, so instead, what we do is issue health advisories and uh, try to help folks protect themselves from the smoke. Uh, EPA felt this was a very vague writing of the rule and asked that we maybe codify what we do. And we thought, you know, that makes sense because we do do things during a wildfire smoke event. We just aren't calling those alerts and warnings and setting into effect winter uh, protective measures. So we revised the rule to put into writing what we do and to also define what a wildfire smoke episode is, which makes common sense. It's, it's when there is smoke present that's from a wildfire, that is the wildfire smoke episode. 
Um, it, it says again that we may weigh the requirements of 4.104, which is what sets those triggers for alerts and warnings and emergencies and crises. Uh, and then it says that we will put out health advisories, which is what we already do, but this is just codifying that. Um, it puts some limits on how long we can waive the alert requirements, um, just to really kind of codify uh, the importance of understanding what that smoke episode is and the boundaries of it. Um, All right, so um, going back to what she's talking about, I, I kind of I, I think the way I can kind of uh, discern what she's basically talking about in terms of um, um, working with the EPA is that um, she basically says is that through this is that you don't need a constant warning system telling you that there's smoke in the air. The whole idea is it's like if there's smoke in the air, just like hey guys, here's a warning, there's smoke in the air. And it's just like yeah, we know we're we, we're looking right out the window and the there's terrible. I was like oh okay. That's, that's kind of what they want to try to avoid because it's like you don't need every day to be warned about smoke that you've been living with during the smoke season. That's kind of what the confusion is with this and the whole waiver and advisory. What they would be doing is just basically giving you updates on what the uh, certain current smoke particulate matter in, in the air is. Um, and then when they get to a certain point, they're able to tell you. Um, how bad the air quality is without being like it, it, it's 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 just uh, interesting kind of like wording as well um, it's just details that they're talking about but I thought that was kind of funny just to kind of think about so of course here is Miss Cofield again um, who gets asked about how the change will affect alerts and warning systems in place already we'll only be waiving the uh, alerts and warnings while the wildfire smoke is present um, so checking comes every day to make sure that it's still wildfire smoke. And that can come into play uh, when we have wildfire seasons that go into late October, like mid-October. We, in 2012, we have wildfire smoke into the middle of October. Um, and that's when you start to maybe have the possibility of um, some other sources coming into play. Um, I think we'd be more of a late October where that would be more likely to be. In fact, we have to be like, well, is our wood stoves part of this? Should we still shut down wood stoves, even though there's still wildfire smoke here? Um, but that's why we have in there using science and meteorology and understanding what's happening. Um, but, yeah, we don't want to be having just if we aren't going to call these alerts and warnings because we don't feel like doing it. It's be like, well, the smoke is present. Okay, great. So it's not... Okay. Helpful. So, yeah, that basically... Um, that that's the deal is what they're doing is that they're um providing information without you know like shoving it down your throat every chance they get during an episode but when an episode starts that's when they get the alerts and of course once the smoke gets to a hazardous quality to go outside they'll also give you alert as well It'd be like hey guys you probably shouldn't go outside because of the air quality but just to uh for, of course uh so basically, it's to stop warning people about an already ongoing n knowledgeable issue that's going on outside. And so that's what they want to change. Um, and Ms. Cofield has been working with the EPA, telling them it's like this is kind of like part of Missoula and part of the Montana area anyway. So it's kind of feels like we're not doing much to constantly alert with the same alert all the time. So that being said, let's go to the – let's look up the Missoula air quality. So – I'm going to go to the website. All you got to do is go to Missoula Air Quality. Air Quality Service, DEQ. It's usually SVC. Um, it's usually, it's pretty simple. It's a pretty complicated, a lot of uh, shorthand. It's svc.mt.gov slash DEQ. And it gives you a nice little map of the air quality in the area. Um, yeah, there's Missoula. It looks like it's green. Usually I do this during the... Um, Summer season, um, this is a graph, so if you could take a closer look, you can see how it's kind of like around the same area, so it's good. Air quality is fine outside. Um, of course, I'll be uh, referring to that uh, website a lot during our smoky fire season, so that that's that. And here is the website where you can find more, more information about your public safety house, se public safety and health, and also the Committee of the Whole Me, where they're talking about the Van Buren um, Interchange Project. You go to ci.missoula.mt.us. It is a wonderful website where you can learn everything what's going on in your government, doing business, residency, and how to get a license to cut down that tree um, in your neighborhood. Because sometimes you might not be aware is that you do need license um, because a lot of the trees, especially in the university, downtown Missoula area 
are uh, public right of way trees. So just be aware of that. And if you if you do need your uh, tree cut, you can get it on a list as well. Um, uh, it's the urban forestry. So if you go to ci.missoula.mt.us and um, basically search Missoula and go to uh, urban forestry and you can go there and you can apply to get your tree cut down if it's dead or dying. So, or also to get it checked if it's dead or dying. So anyways, um, that kind of concludes that topic. I'm going to show you a nice little art clip once again. And this is the last time I'm going to be able to play this art clip from the International Cups at the Clay Studio of Missoula. So when I come back, I'll talk about events here in Missoula. Well, one more weekend for the Big Sky Documentary Film Festival, and if you're interested in, in learning about showtimes and upcoming movie presentations, this is your last weekend to check it out. You go to BigSkyFilmFest.com for more information. Let's kick it off with our first thing of the Friday morning. Like always, Missoula Indoor Sports Arena, Mismo Gymnastics, and Roots Acro Sports Center is the place to go for your kids walking. Um, from birth to walking, and basically it's a, a giant gymnastics room filled with uh, baby-proofed uh, buildings, so kids can enjoy some fun, safe activities indoors. Um, Tiny Tales and Storytime at the Missoula Public Library. They won't be doing some tumbling, except for with their brains, starting at 10.30 a.m. at the Missoula Public Library. Tiny Tales, Storytime, all sorts of fun reading opportunities there for kids between age of birth and five years of age. They separate the group from Tiny Tales, which is birth to three years of age, and story time, which is usually around the early toddler rugrat stage where kids are slowly learning to read and recognize words. Um, kids learn new words, nine new words every day, so um, in Musa Public Library is the best place to do it. Um, eyes and Optics, Spectrum Discovery Center is learning about eyes and the optics and the maker space, they're doing a cardboard creation. So this is going to be at 812 Tool Avenue. It's 350 and if you're under three, you get in free. Yarns and Watercolor back at the Missoula Public Library. If you're interested in stitching and doing some fun crocheting, um, go to Yarns um, at the Missoula Public Library. But if you're interested in doing a little more watercolor with Rob P, you can do some watercoloring at the Missoula Public Library, all starting at 12. The eyes have it. Uh, first person structure in nonfiction. University of Montana is hosting an event. Um, it looks like it's going on twice. And as a prominent nonfiction writer, will show some details about his crafts at the University of Montana on Friday. Today, uh, Sajiv. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, this is terrible. Uh, here, I'll actually show you the name and so you don't judge me about how horrible I am at pronouncing this name. So here it is. Shajiv Bahata Hadshargya. Sorry, I'm very, very sorry. Will deliver his lecture, uh, The Eyes Have It, First Person Structure to Nonfiction, from noon to 12.50 um, in Turner Hall's Dell Brown Room, followed by a nonfiction reading at 7 p.m. Both are s uh, sponsored through the President's Writers in Re um, Resistance series and UM's Creative Writing Program. Um, he is a U.S. correspondent for Esquire 
Magazine, UK's version, a member of the nonfiction faculty of the Pacific University MFA in writing program in Oregon, and a freelance freelancer in a various publications such as Telegraph, The Guardian, and others. Originally from London, he became a features editor from GQ Magazine in the UK before moving to Los Angeles in 2000. So he'll be here. And you get to learn some nonfiction writing and you get to hang out with them. It'll, I think it'll be great, especially if you're an aspiring writer or journalist. Uh, teen Writers Group, when you're done with that, you can go back to the Missoula Public Library and do a Teen Writers Group from 3.30 to 5 p.m. And then ju jump on back and listen to a nonfiction reading by this guy. Um, predator feeding at the Missoula Insectarium. They'll be feeding crickets to one of the hungry predators at 4 p.m. every Friday. Join them as they explain and demonstrate how to capture and consume prey and see who is hungry today at the uh, Missoula Insectarium. And it's off of Front Street, um, pretty much behind in the building. It's like in the same building as Elks Lodge. So it's like if you go to Elks Lodge and see the front of it, it's in the back. You can't miss it. Top Hat Family Friendly Friday starts at 6 p.m. and it goes into about 9 p.m. It is a great way to uh, end off the week, hang out with your kids, and uh, tie one over with a couple of drink specials. Public Talk with Ven Rabina Corton. Missoula Chamber of Commerce is hosting a public talk, The Value of Cherishing Others. When we recognize the shortcomings of cherishing the self and the benefits of cherishing others, we can bring the experience genuine happiness. We can follow the logical process to learn what we will not find happiness through ourselves, but rather th through cherishing others. And this is happening at 7 p.m. tonight. Um, and let me see if there's anything going on. Oh, in the next room, there is a play happening at the University of Montana. One of my after-school program um, uh, volunteers um, is in this play, and he says it's going to be great. It's for mature audiences. It's at 7.30 p.m. at the University of Montana. Um, go to the PAR TV building, and they'll show you the right way to go. You can also go to grizzsticks.com for your information about that. Um, here are some of your late-night events. Um, if you guys aren't going to the Big Side Documentary Film Festival because there's so much going on at the Elks Lodge, um, at the uh, Roxy and at the Wilma Theater and MCT. So Cash for Junkers is going to be at the Union Club. Um, Dirty Revival is going to be at the Top Hat Lounge. Uh, Pale People, Motorhome, and the ES and TSPS is going to be a music jam band at the VFW. And that concludes everything that you guys need to know what's happening for your Friday. Here's a Short little PSA about what you got, what you can have your kids do between the ages of nine and thirteen for our Saturday animation drop-in. Hey guys, welcome back. Now let's talk about some Saturday events. That's every Saturday from 1 to 5 p.m. But here is what's happening other than our Saturday drop-ins. God forbid. Um, but if you're not going to the Grizz uh, Bobcat game, a basketball game, the doubleheader between the girls and boys hosted here at the Dahlberg Arena at the Adams Center, um, you can go to Introduction to Soldiering. Uh, soldiering. So it's soldiering, not soldiering. And it's going to be a decades in life following learning center. The whole idea is basic silversmithing class or equivalent skills in terms of um, butt smoldering and picks uh, soldering. And they'll cover the tricks and trades and common problems, learning this skill will open up a new word, uh, world of opportunities for your jewelry making and go home with a new pendant to wear. Uh, the Right Stuff with Jack Shiflett is going to be at the Living Art of Montana. Living Art 
of Montana is a drop-in Saturday riding workshop facilitated by Jack Shiflett. The right stuff is for riders and non-riders alike. They use essay-guided writing prompts to explore writing as told for self-expression. They're offered free of charge for adults 18 or older dealing with an illness or loss. Uh, no experience necessary. For questions, you can call them at 549-5329, and you can go to livingartofmontana.org as well. It is time for the 2018 Snow Bowl Cup uh, Galande, uh, Galande Championship. Whew, sorry about that. Uh, so starting at 11 a.m. at Snow Bowl for this weekend only. More than 20 ski jumpers from around the country will be competing this year at the Missoula Snow Bowl Ski Area. Jumpers launch from takeoff to clear a 90-foot platform and soar up to 200 feet the natural hill. Um... Oh, wait, down the natural hill, sorry. The event ha has a festive atmosphere for the whole family with food, music, and front row spe uh, spectating in indoors and outdoors. You can go to their website, Snow Bowl, um, uh, you, and to find out more about events, because there's a whole list of events happening from basically 11 a.m. all the way to like 6 and 7 p.m. and whatnot, excuse me. Uh, so the uh, Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation is doing a kids' event on Saturday at starting at 11 a.m. until about 1 p.m. It's a good way to, to, good way for kids to learn learn about elks. And then before that, you can go to our Saturday drop-ins at 1 p.m. Um, <laughs> but the uh, Big Sky Documentary Film Festival is doing a block of shorts all day. So if you don't like watching uh, maybe like a 60 to an hour and a half documentary about one thing, why not watch a series of shorts uh, documentaries happening this weekend um, as well at the Big Sky Documentary Film Festival, a block of shorts all day. Um, and that's going to be at the... Uh, I believe it's going to be at the Roxy. Uh, Dancing with the S Missoula Stars is happening at 7.30 p.m. So we're going to really just skip over basically all the middle midday events because the, the Grizz Cat game is going on and everyone wants to go there. Um, and then, of course, uh, 4.15, just letting you guys know that MCAT will be airing our, our final live-streamed game on our Facebook page, Missoula's Community Media Resource. You go to our Facebook page, you like it, you get notified when we go live so you'll be able to watch our game. It's a nice little pout cleanser between your girls and boys uh, bo Grizz Bobcat um, games um, happening on Saturday. So do that. And then, of course, MCAT will also be live streaming another thing starting at 7.30 p.m. at the MCT Center for Performing Arts called Dancing with the Missoula Stars. And... Um, Ten local celebrities, Missoula celebrities, and local dance professionals from Downtown Dance Collective will team up to perform choreographed, choreograph, choreographed dance. Um, they showcase their newfound dance moves at Dance Do with the Missoula Stars, and at the end of the evening, the team who fundraises the, m the most will take home the coveted Mirror Ball Trophy. Um, and then also, I do have a Sunday event as well that I want to talk about because this is uh, something that uh, I've heard a lot of people want to get into and want to be a part of, and it's audition for Disney's The Little Mermaid at MCT. So uh, Disney's The Little Mermaid is now, uh, uh, the licensing has been released to local theaters around the nation, and MCT is jumping on board. So grab your fin and swim over to the MCT Center for, for Performing Artists. Uh, the Missoula Community Theater is hosting an open audition on Sunday, February 25th, for Disney's The Little Mermaid. The audition will take place from 12.30 to 4 p.m. Um, director Joseph Martinez is organizing an audition by age group. Children ages 10, 15 will audition from 12.30 to 2 p.m. Adults aged 16 and over will audition from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Martinez will be joined by the music of director James Rio and cho uh, choreographer Heather Adams. Just getting fresh off of Dancing with the Missoula Stars, uh, roles can be cast um, with a plethora of humans and sea creatures, including the yearling Ariel, the historic Prince Eric, the unscrupulous Ursula, her assistants, uh, Flot Sam and Zet Sam, uh, the adorable Flounder, and the harried um, Sebastian. Um, I mean, of course, Martinez expects to cast about 35 people in this play. Thus concludes the events that are happening here in the city of Missoula. Here are some of the things you guys can do um, to be part of the MCAT crew. Um, MCAT is hosting a Spring Flicks happening on March 26th through the 30th. It's the last week. It's during spring break. It's $150, but it's a really great deal. So it's basically $30 a day for seven hours, starting from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. for kids who just want to learn to create, 
stop motion films, do some live action stuff, basically learn how to video edit and be part of a movie making team um, and family here at Missoula's Community Media Resource, MCAT. And also, we are also looking, um, these are way in advance topics. So. We're looking for focus groups, so ours feeds P, and we need your vision to drive our passion for community service for 10 years. Uh, MCAT will be holding four focus groups to gather information from you. So the whole idea of this is that our franchise fee negotiation with Charter Communication, which is the channel that we're on, will be um, will be negotiating a new contract with them for 10 years. Uh, of course, we've only had to negotiate with uh, Bresnan uh, two times: the first time in 1990, again in 2005, and then. After that, Char I mean, um, Breslin sold to Optimum. Optimum got um, engulfed by Charter, and now Charter is kind of like the Northwestern um, cable company of of the United States. So, and they are gonna, and we're gonna be working with a negotiation contract for a 10-year agreement, and we want your input opinion and we w want to know what you want your community media resource to be in the future. Um, yeah, so it's going to happen at the Missoula Public Library, and focus groups uh, range from um, government, um, school, um, and many different officials from the city of Missoula. So choose your group that applies to you. Um, you can go to MCAT.org. You can click on focus groups, and you can click here to sign up. It's that simple. If you want to learn more information about my show, you can go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice you made your read it out twice. It's where you can see content and wonderful videos from our past, present, and future of Wake Up Missoula. We are going on our fourth year beginning in March. So Wake Up Missoula has been airing on our MCAT channel 189 since 2000 and blah, 2015? No, 2014. 15, 16, 17, 18. No, 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay, 15. 2015. Woo! So anyways, uh, we've been airing since 2015 of March. Um, and I remember that day specifically because um, it snowed really, really bad just before we went on live on MCAT channel 189. Or I believe it was channel 7 when we started airing. And then and Charter moved us to 189 and 190. So that can't be helped. And um, thank you guys for joining me. Um, just want to remind you again that MCAT will be live streaming twice, not once, not three times, but twice this Saturday, 4.15, and once again at 7.30. The first one is going to be a sports game between the Boys Sentinel High School um, and another team. And, of course, uh, we're doing Dancing with the Missoula Stars Saturday night at 7.30 p.m. So there's going to be a lot of live streaming happening um, this weekend as well. And you can air it and, and you can find out and you can watch those streams by liking MCAT's Facebook page, um, Missoula, MK, um, Missoula's Community Media Resource. But of course, if you want to do any social media, all you got to do is Google Wake Up Missoula. You can find out all my social media from Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. So be sure to subscribe, like, and follow because three different things doing basically meaning the same thing. Um, and for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. There's a lot going on here. And the only day I probably won't be working is Sunday. Hopefully, knock on wood. Thanks for joining me. Mm -hmm.